Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Before we dive into this uh, Outlaw Comics episode, I want to remind everybody that we now have a Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon that you can join. The link is underneath this video. It will give you access to our videos early, which will help offset the Kayfabe effect. Some of this stuff is pretty rare. It'll, you'll be the first ones in line to get it before anybody even knows to look for it. And there are people watching right now in a live stream chat. Uh, so I'm looking at that stack of books that you have over there. You're going to put pull it in here. They're getting it before anybody else. Yeah, these might be some of the uh, kayfabe affected books. Um, we are also working cartoonists. Best way to support cartoonists kayfabe is to buy our books. Ed Piscor's Red Room, X Men Grand Design, Hip Hop Family Tree, and WYSIWYG are out in better bookstores everywhere. Hulk Grand Design, Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live, and The Plain Janes are my latest books. So pick those up wherever you buy books, and we will appreciate it. But, Ed, today we are going to look at some kind of unusual outlaw comics. These are Mike Diodato's first couple of books, and uh, these are like Brazilian outlaw comics, if you will, and they are put out by Caliber Comics out of Michigan. We've talked about Caliber. One of those publishers that's around for a couple of decades has kind of like waves of what yeah. they do. So in the 80s, they come up with stuff like Dead World, Vince Locke, uh, Guy Davis's Baker Street, and yeah. The Crow, James O'Barr's The Crow, one of their early efforts. But over the years, they do a variety of things. And in the mid-90s, we start to see Mike Diodato Jr. become a hot commodity. He's drawing Wonder Woman at DC, Avengers at Marvel Comics, uh, Thor at Marvel, doing, I think, Glory for yeah. Rob Liefeld. So he's kind of everywhere. Wizard Magazine's covering him. You know, he's a hot artist. And Caliber starts, well, you know what? I have a feeling that actually Diodato's agent probably comes to Caliber with this idea because Diodato has a career in Brazil before he gets to America. Yeah, it's funny, man. Like, because his agent would be that Dave Campiti guy, mm -hmm. Glasshouse Studios. And he used to come to Pittsburgh all the time, man. He had he had that that, that wife like or, or girlfriend or something, like Jinky something or other. It's a real weird scene. And I remember showing him portfolios because i i didn't know anybody i was just showing portfolios to everybody it was like mike diodato and al rio were his guys that that he was yeah. getting work all over the place and he's like listen your work is accomplished but you're it, it, this is old-fashioned what you're doing take a look at mike diodato and he, and he goes mike diodato has five thousand photographs in his morgue file <laughs> And he, file. and he arranges them, and he blows things up, and then he creates a whole thing. And then he traces them off in that Mike Diodato style. And that's how he benefits from this and that. Like, just real real goofball. That's funny. I'm going to start I'm gonna start going through these because, again, like I feel like these are outlaw comics. I've pulled them all out of dollar bins over the years. This is a reprint of Diodato Jr.'s first comic. And I uh, figure that's kind of noteworthy and smart on the part of Caliber to be putting this out whenever this guy seems to be suddenly in demand. They were making deals, you know, Caliber, Caliber Press is the publisher of Mobius Comics. And uh, that's they, right. they, they made they made interesting deals at, at, the, at this stage. I got to tell you, there's some of my favorite art wise, some of my favorite Diodato work. Um, this particular issue is written by his dad, who was a cartoonist also in Brazil. So imagine that's kind of a cool idea of uh, father, you know, if you're the father and your son is showing up. And I got to tell you, man, first comic published, like, well, well here, here's here's damn. the thing. Here, here's the thing also is that uh, he's not bound by the house styles of of Marvel DC or influenced by that, or like this Dave Campiti guy. I was going to say Dave Campiti pushing him on whatever is the popular style. Yeah, say, yeah exactly. saying that you got to do this and that. Like, you take a look at the front covers. That's that's where his art basically got perverted into unnaturally. Uh, for commercial purposes, but you get to see him closer to probably what is natural or maybe even the influence of his own dad. Yeah, super cool layouts and stuff from page to page. And you see a lot of this gray media where you're bringing in, you know, sometimes screen tones that are very visible, maybe a finer tone that's not as visible. But just from a layout standpoint, like, doesn't it remind you of kind of like heavy metal 70s, almost global comics, you it, know, like you're drawn from... It's hard not to see Steranko and Galassi in some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I I would bet that maybe even some of this stuff. I mean, it would be hard to lay this out in a way that I'm thinking. But like those like little square format historietta shits, like it's it's kind of like you would see um, captions that are that shape and things. It does make me wonder, and people at home can maybe fill in the gaps in in the uh, comments. But where is this stuff being published? Yeah, because I don't know what's coming out of Brazil in terms of like, you know, we know 
Band Destiny or something out of France. You know, we know manga books, but I don't know what Brazil's like format is right. that they're making. So one of the notes on this particular issue is this is considered all ages. And I don't know if you've been paying attention, but it's kind of violent. Yeah. And we're going to get to uh, a little bit more than violence as, as we progress through. But look Clear, at that, Clear man. Neil Adams' inspiration right there. Yeah. Yeah. Neil Adams is a good a good call. Beautiful page layout. Fucking though. badass, man. Super confident, I think, for a uh, first, time, first time person. And also with this much white space, to me, that's another mark of pure confidence. Even the negative space around this guy's face. You see he can fetishize that, that muscular form and things. And Diodato is one of those dudes. I, I so on, we have a naked woman on the last page for on the, the all ages version. On of this. the explore page of uh, Instagram, will come up uh, Mike Diodato sometimes. And he's like a Brazilian jiu-jitsu dude, like super fit, muscular. Like so, those guys that do this kind of anatomy, they they know the body well, man. And and a lot of those guys are weightlifters and super fit dudes. Yeah, I always think that they used to teach figure drawing as just much more hardcore than uh, it's taught today. Sure. And there's probably some schools that do. Um, I linger on this page for people at home that want to pause it and kind of like see a, a biography of uh, Diodato, uh, father or son. And then the ads are always interesting to me to see like what's going on in a caliber at this time. Mike Avon Oming doing one of his early books, covered by Mike Mignola. Yeah. So pretty good pool for, uh, for caliber to bring in a Mike Mignola on the cover. How about... Razor Knights, Incredible Adult Entertainment. We're going to save that one for last because that to, that is what started me on this quest. I picked this one up and was like, oh, I need to I need to buy these whenever I see them. Ramthar, totally in this image style, right? I mean, that's what his style grows into. This character, he does contemporary with this book in one of the, um, I think it's a Maximum Press anthology. So you could find 10 pages or so of Ramthar at this time. But it reminded me a little bit of Damlog. Like, you open Absolutely. it up and see almost a cyborg-looking character right from the beginning. Mutants listed really big. And another one, story by uh, his his father. And you can see these are the caliber offerings. So, again, I'll pause there for a moment. You missing one? Put a call out. You maybe, maybe it comes <laughs> into the P.O. box. I, I am missing Prime Cuts number one and, I guess, Protheus number two, if that one was actually Such published dumb or titles. not. Ramthar and Protheus. Yeah, I wonder if it, something's it, lost in the translation. It, it, it almost, like, with both of the THs, it almost sounds like somebody has a lisp. Ramthar, Protheus. <laughs> maybe it was over the telephone and it was... Uh... Or maybe it's, uh, <laughs> that, what is it, Castilian Spanish? Doesn't it remind you of Fleetway a little bit? There's something oh, totally. weird with the reproduction that reminds me of, like, the Fleetway reproduction where it's almost choppy. If I didn't know better, I'd say it's, like, low-res digital or something. And it's and it's it's probably, uh, like, scanned or, or, like, the the materials they're using are probably the printed objects rather than the original arts. Um, he's so good with shadow. Like, yeah. like, you'll see that consistently, but also page layout. Like, this is a wild montage. I don't know anybody that really does stuff like this. This doesn't really exist in American comics today, as far as I know. Yeah, it just never really was. It was like a part of our illustrated movie poster tradition. Yeah, yeah, and you might see it, I think, in like some European stuff, maybe some heavy metal stuff, but not really here. And I mean, like, this is almost like ads, you know, these little pieces that are put together, especially with the strong type. But he's doing a lot. You know, these are multiple screens on this image where you're doing shadows of screens instead of black and white. Sure. So ambitious. You know, same same deal here. Pushing black and white about as far as you can. Yeah. Often whenever I look at, like, um, South American comics, it's an Argentinian mm -hmm. tradition. So I don't know that much about... I know nothing about Brazil's comics history. It's just so funny because, like, this is clearly an example of, like, the Sylvester approach of, of like... Dumb down for my audience, double my dollars. Yeah. Because he did not make the money that he made from glory that he did on this stuff. And it's just so much more rigorous, so much more natural to, like, probably what he does, what he wants to do. But you have to, like, the, the audience in America ain't looking for that. So you got to fucking dumb your shit down, do the style du jour, and then you could benefit. If you want to go that route, if you, you know, kind of, to be honest, are a job guy. He was taking jobs. He had a fucking art paid. agent. This stuff is almost as good as whatever black and white I can think of pulling out. A thousand percent. You know, like, it's really sharp as black and white art. They even have, like, these backups. So, like, you really get your money's worth, especially if you paid 50 cents for this, like yeah. I did. Um, but 
very I, inventive, man. If you're if you're making black and white art, like this is one of those you could look at and steal from. Look, yeah. this is another one of those movie poster montages. I mean, that might that might be uh, Rambo. So like, yeah, you, it really you, might you, be that. Like, <laughs> like, that's probably the, the, I'm the through through file this. image. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking through this, and I'm like, you know what? I could see all the photos that oh, get arranged and traced. Chris, Christopher Walken showing up. I was thinking of that guy uh, Magoo and the prisoner dude. Look at these. These are all. This, this is this, this has is to be a trace of this, right? It's like you're doing the same. Well, this is this is Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator, but this is Rambo, and then you just put a mustache on him. Yeah. But then you like paste on, you know, your dad's face. You know, it's Mike Diodato Senior's face. Whenever I think of like, uh, think of like Ken Langriff, right? Like yeah. we talk about power comics and cool black and white stuff. Like, man, some of that is here. Platoon, and it's again, all of these books have like a piece in the back that really kind of fills in the gaps of like what you're looking at. Yeah. And uh, we'll end here on Razor Knights because I think this is, uh, like I said, this is what got me going. Feels a little bit smoother, yeah. a little better reproduction. I think this is, you know, probably those other books maybe earlier in his career. His dad's uh -huh. writing them, so maybe pulling some strings to get them published. This is like straight up different art style, but I mean, this is Ben Mara kind of like midnight movie action. 80s, uh, 80s VHS right. is what you're looking at here. And uh, this one is not all ages, so we're we're gonna see uh, oh, adult yeah. content. But again, man, maybe like um, the Italian crime movies of the time period. This reminds me of uh, Two Fisted Zombies, <laughs> right? <laughs> Except that I don't think that's a bone. Yeah, same same deal though. Like you still see his ability to compose in black and white and have that confidence to leave open spaces. You said dildo. <laughs> This guy is like uh, the predator, the dark horse predator guy. Yeah. This is your contact from that from that comic. Or it's Black Cross. Oh, yeah. There you go. A little bit more of the uh, black and whites, too, in here. You don't see quite as much of the, I don't know, gray rendering that are in those other two issues. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Throwing a girl out the window. Some Sin City shades. But, I mean, like, this is hard out... Outlaw Comics, right? When we say Outlaw Comics, I feel like this is your R-rated adult kind of comics. I don't know if I can even linger on some of these pages. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there were pieces that you were lingering on. I know you didn't see the panel. I know you were looking at other shit. Yeah, I saw I saw some stuff there that uh, we'll keep keep moving. But Razor's a drug, so that's the story here, right? The the, uh, the Razor kills like this is a drug trade story, and people that are being turned almost zombie like in their addiction to this thing mm, they know about some of that stuff in the favelas in brazil and shit to get their next uh hit but you know bottles being used, broken bottles being used to uh kill each other maim each other like it's a violent dark comic see, i was shocked when i came across this yeah these are always fun see what's coming out of caliber in uh, 1996 david mack we know uh negative burn get any issue of those and you'll get like one or two interesting things and then you get this stuff where it's like a whole lot of like what the fuck is this my uh one of my uh what do you call it? ra's at uh the Kubert school was real impressed with him man because he had a uh, caliber comic when he was in high school called uh the scythe it was mm. called man I don't know if I know that one. Let me read the description. This is Razor Knights. This is an adults-only, underlined, foray into sex, drugs, and rock and roll. A powerful, addictive, illegal drug called Razor is introduced in the U.S., and its users binge on raw, wild sex and maniacal violence. I mean, that's that's the best summary for an outlaw comic I can think of. Absolutely. There's prime cuts, not to be confused with the uh, Fantagraphics anthology series. Of the same name. Yeah, I don't have this. I don't know if I've even seen this one. So, yeah, if somebody at home wants to fill in my uh, my collection of these things, by all means, send it to our P.O. box. But these are kind of cool comics and unexpected for me. Yeah. A big surprise. And since we have been seeing Diodato in Wizard and then picking this up out of a 50-cent bin, I felt like... Uh, Let's give a fuller picture of this guy. Yeah, not bad, man. Not bad. Didn't know about this stuff at all. So I have zero of them. So if you send them to the uh, P.O. box, anyone will do. And I'll uh, hang on to those ones. And good for Caliber for having this stuff at the time. Because a lot of those books on their list, I don't have a lot of respect for. Yeah. So it's nice that they've got... You know, it's probably the history of any publisher. You just got to have a few books that are really uh, the noteworthy at the... Uh, you know, each time the long tail method man you got it you got the big one that props up the rest of uh the the bibliography pretty cool man yeah there you go 
Good to go? I am. All right, Kayfabers, you know how it is, man. Uh, these comics, probably ain't too many of them on eBay, and they're already snapped up by the people who are watching this live stream and who have gotten this edited video before you did, if you are not part of our Patreon. So hit that link in the description below. Uh, offer some level of support, and you're getting some videos uh, before anybody else does. And we now actually have a queue developing of videos that uh, might not see the light of day for quite some time. So if you don't have your full kayfabe fix man there's a lot of stuff up there uh, already and every week there will be more that uh we're not putting out until me and jimmy want to take another vacation uh what else do we have out there jim i have the plain janes and street angel deadliest girl live in print right now hulk grand design coming to your comic shop february 22nd reserve your copy today and street angel princess of poverty ready for pre-order from image comics coming out later this spring and finally join me on patreon.com slash jim rug where you can see lots more of my comics and art and download out of print zines and mini comics red room uh, is the comic series i'm working on today you have two trade paperbacks of that out on stands uh right now red room trigger warnings and red room the anti-social network serialized new red room comics on my own patreon uh three bucks get you the archive there and i have uh, new strips coming out every tuesday uh, link in the description below to get to all that material. But 10th anniversary of Hip Hop Family Trees, scoop up, scoop up those books if you see them. X Men Grand Design, WYSIWYG, it's all out there. Jimmy, what else do we have out there though? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. Pick up Cartoonist KFAB t shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, fanny packs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. Link below this video. Another great way to support the channel, man. Give them those marching orders, Jimmy. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.